to hear a blast from the past? Sure do. Okay. Remember our beloved and dearly departed drummer Dave? Yes. Drummer Dave. The drummer Dave saga carries on from the grave. How? How does it carry from beyond the pale? Beyond just or the veil? Due to... or the... whatever it is. <laughs> well, both. Yeah. Um, strictly due to my poor organizational skills is how it continues to re show itself. Yes. Um, in my effort to organize emails or calls that come in, I have a bunch of different folders on my computer for this podcast. And sometimes I see themes emerging with stories and I'm like, okay, create a new folder, put them in that. Or yeah, there's a theme that can be a show later or something like that. But inevitably I'm not very good at it. So stuff gets lost. Drummer and here, Dave. So here I was opened an old uh, folder and whose voice is it? But drummer Dave and it's as timely as ever. Drummer Dave's question Wait, is as timely as ever. You got to share with the listener real quick who has not, who maybe came on after the Drummer Dave. Share share a little bit about Drummer Dave. I mean, I don't even, to be honest, I don't even remember all the details of the arc. Um, Drummer Dave messaged in a couple of times, had very fun stories. I think one of them was visiting a whorehouse, you Perpetually know? Perpetually funny. Yeah, like really, and very honest. Again, talking about, would you admit that you watched porn last night? Drummer Dave admitting it, you know what yeah. I mean? And so, and I don't want to misspeak of the dead, but um, yeah, one of them was a whorehouse. One of them was Waikiki with his buddies who had like said something offensive to the girl and then they ran up to their apartment and then the girl's boyfriend came up and they like pulled a fire alarm to escape this scenario. There was these funny stories that kept popping up. Then we didn't hear from him for a year or two or three. And then he wrote in to say that he had gotten cancer and was in the hospital and uh, gave us that journey. And the story that he told in that was that he was listening to our podcast throughout it. And that was part of his recovery. And so then he planned a trip to Hawaii and that was, you know, he was revisiting Hawaii after the cancer journey and all that sort of stuff. So we had all this back and forth over the course of a couple of years. Great character. Never met him in person, but great character on the show. And then we didn't hear from him for a period of time. And a friend of his called in to let us know that Drummer Dave had passed. And the friend of his had heard Drummer Dave talk about our podcast, um, but never had listened to our podcast before, but I think had gotten access to Drummer Dave's email and had seen some of the exchanges that we had had with Drummer Dave and realized that there was a bit of sentimentality connected. And so that's why he took the initiative to call us and let us know that Drummer Dave had passed. So Drummer Dave from beyond the grave for today's barrel or not. Yeah. And this call, I found it in a folder. Um, it was dated October 20th, 2021. So Amazing. now more than four years old. And here is what he has to inquire about for Barrel or Not. David Lee, Chaz, how you doing? Drummer Dave here. Hey, I got a potential Barrel or Not for you. Now that there's a little crispness in the morning air, and we've had a few windy days that are kind of chilly, uh, the women folk have uh, started their yearly tradition of wearing yoga pants with Ugg boots. Barrel or nah, I'm going to give it a huge barrel. So, yeah, barrel. And and when I played this, I remembered specifically the reason I'd never played it in 2021. Why? I thought it was a little inappropriate for us to be commenting on women's fashions. But I think we can do it now in 2024. I feel that the climate has changed. The temperature has dropped. We're okay now. Yeah, no, I'm fine. That's why I played it too. Uh, Not so only for the nostalgia. In, in 2021, I can't remember what I was feeling about yoga pants specifically then. Specifically then, I probably wasn't still not liking them. 2024, I loathe, and let me say this once again, loathe technical kind of fabrics, right? The, these are not to be worn out. They're to be worn in yoga, in the gym, if you're running laps around your house or around the neighborhood or whatever, there is time and a place for technical gear. Now, the problem, this disease, the yoga pant disease on women has seeped into the male uh, segment of the market where I get served up ads on Insta or, you know, see them. I don't know where else I am, but I see regularly 
ads for more and more comfortable pants for men, right? Yeah. Where this thing right here looks like kind of a suit, but five way stretch and we got, you know, comfortable waistband, right? Like stop being so damn comfortable, everyone. Like let's pee. We don't need to be like, it's so comfortable. It's like, basically I'm a tiny little newborn baby again. It's like, that's literally what stop emasculating yourself, man. Stop just seeking. I need more and more comfort. My pants, my pants are constricting. I need more comfort. So I'm going at zero barrel on anything that has four way stretch. So I agree with you. And I think drummer Dave was referring to the aesthetic of females yes, in yoga pants, at a different time I, too it hadn't it hadn't jumped the shark back then yeah and i understand his point but i'm with you on this one where yoga pants the most unlikely place for them to be worn is in a yoga studio at this point 99 yes. of yoga pants sold never see a yoga studio and so it's completely jumped the shark where it used to be this is an indicator that I do yoga and now I'm showcasing that to the greater world. Maybe I stopped at the grocery store on the way home from, and then you, that's no longer the case. No. Now, now it is the universal pant that never sees the yoga studio. So for that reason alone, I'm going no barrel. He's also mentioned yoga pants with Uggs, which I don't know if that's a specific to certain regions of the world. Um, it is a look, it's a seasonal look. I got to say, uh, I don't think Uggs are a fashionable thing to do, but there is nothing better than going to check either the waves or go get coffee in the morning on a cold morning. A pair of Uggs. Then the the Uggs are the ultimate, the best, the most comfortable, the warmest. But as soon as that sun comes up, you want to switch your footwear. That's the truth. Uh, there's a couple reasons for that too. Nothing, no foot ever gets sweatier than in the belly of an ug when it starts to get warm outside like it is a becomes a swamp down there which you really do want to avoid it's also the clamminess or the wetness of your foot cannot get into the ug after the surf so i'm okay with wearing the uggs to the beach bring a pair of sandals or whatever else for the drive home yeah good call but no barrel it. no barrel on tech pant in general i'm just going across yeah. the board no barrel and stop yeah. serving me comfortable pant ads please well, it's thank nice. you, drum. Thank you, drummer Dave, for your submission. Uh, second barrel and awe comes off of last week's sleeping with a surfboard. I got a lot of people chiming in, going, "Look, I've never slept with a surfboard, but let me tell you, that surfboard lives in my bedroom." Uh, ritual first night of getting a board, I put it in my bed bedroom. Other people saying, "I always have a surfboard in my bedroom." Did so barrel get, and barrel and did you get keeping. did Did you get the one uh, the <laughs> guy who licked his surfboard? No. Oh yeah. Somebody told me I don't sleep with it, but every new surfboard I get, I lick it like you used to as a kid, you know, lick something that you didn't want another kid to have, uh, like to show possession. So every surfboard he gets, he says, his first thing he does is he licks his surfboard, which I wow. like that one. Yeah. <clears throat> and if you get a brand new surfboard from the factory itself, it's got lots of foam dust or sanding yep. resin dust on it. Vitamins. So, uh, Keeping a surfboard in your bedroom, Chaz, barrel or not? Great one. And I'm going to go no barrel. I'm sorry, dear uh, listeners who do this. And I'll caveat it. If you are single and or live in a studio apartment and or live in a one bedroom apartment, but the you know living area, you're not going to throw your surfboard out there, then totally fine. If it's, if it's some kind of functional thing, because there's just no other room for it. Yeah, yeah. But if there's anywhere else for your surfboard to go, take your surfboard out of the bedroom. I mean, it's just, it's weird in there. It's an awkward place for a surfboard, surfboard to be. Well, the funny thing is that I had a number of these come in from adult males who I know are married who yeah. said, I, and I didn't even know this was a thing, but a number of, I'd say four or five of them specifically said on the first night, I keep it in the bedroom just because I'm excited to see it. I want to look at it. And my I, wife has accepted it. I can get that. I can, I can get behind bringing it up to the bedroom for, you know, whatever for like that little emotional thing, but it doesn't stay. It should not stay in the bedroom. I know. Yeah. I, I guess I can give the caveat to the one night thing, one night stand, but I'm going no barrel, no barrel on having your surfboard in your bedroom, your bedroom. The other thing is I understand coveting something and really ex being excited about it. And then 
when I get it, I want to look at it. But the bedroom is a different, is a holy space, let's say. And it doesn't need to be infused with all of your interests in life. Yeah. yeah. The uh, Here's a problem though also about taking your board into your bedroom. Uh, most bedrooms are not the first room in the house. Most bedrooms are tucked back somewhere. You're really, really, really begging to ding your brand new surfboard while you're taking it to the bedroom. There's there's almost always a hallway, probably a corner, possibly some stairs, possibly stairs with a cut back on it. There's so many places to ding your surfboard, getting it into the bedroom and nothing almost except for kids throwing plastic utensils on the ground is as aggravating as dinging a brand new board before you've waxed it, before you've paddled it out to just clumsily take the corner too close. And yeah, bonk. God forbid it's a long board. There's yeah. no chance you're navigating that. Nope. All right. Well, solve that one too. No barrel. <clears throat> Final barrel, barrel or not comes from friend of the show, uh, Shay Soma. Shay says, I think I have a potential barrel and offer you. As newish parents, our daughter just turned two, my wife and I are spending each day fully pinned, ping-ponging between taking care of the kiddo and our individual work responsibilities. In our pre-kid life, one of our favorite things to do was go to the local independent theater. Shout out to the Palm Theater and Slow, the first solar-powered movie theater in America. Our alternative, or alternatively, use the projector in our own mini theater experience at home and get transported to an alter alternate world via the magic art of film for a few hours. I love the way a movie can feel immersive and experimental and clocking in at an average of two hours. It feels like just the right amount of time for a nice mental break from whatever is preoccupying me at the moment. These days, however, dates to go out to see a movie are infrequent. So more often than not, we end up or we find ourselves at home trying to start a movie in bed on a laptop screen at nine at night after doing the bedtime routine with the kiddo, picking up the house and inevitably falling asleep within 15 minutes of starting it. Then we'll watch this movie in 15 minute increments over the course of a week. My wife is fine with this as she compares it to watching episodes of a TV show. However, I am opposed. Uh, to me, the immersive transportive elements of watching a good movie are totally absent in this viewing experience. Or of course, if we choose to forego I'm sorry, of course, if we choose to forego movies altogether, if we're unable to view them in their entirety in a single sitting, then we would probably only see about two movies a year for the next 10 to 15 years or five to 10 years. And our entertainment options will be limited to bite-sized format only. This seems, while not quite tragic, maybe suboptimal is the right word. So bear or not, watching films in 15 minute increments, keep work, Shay. Thank you so much for the journey, Shay. I didn't know where this, I was going to be, okay, is this like taking your kid to the theater barrel or not? Is this, which I will say, Shay, just FYI, I got my kid uh, onto watching movies as early as I could in the theater. Like, I think the first movie she watched, it was, uh, uh, she must have been three probably and took her to Big Hero 6. It was a Disney movie. Yeah. Uh, and she sat and she <laughs> cried at the appropriate times and she laughed, you know, and then it was like, you teach them, teach the kid to have an attention, a film length attention span in the theater where you don't have to, you know, I think people are so scared of, Oh, what if my kid gets antsy or what? Nope. They're going to sit and watch the movie for two hours. It's not an unreasonable ask to be entertained for two hours and not need more fidgeting or entertainment or something else like teach your kids young and to like sit through a movie because you can really broaden that out right like we've watched great films now but on to his specific point i say no barrel on the 15 uh minute increments there's an, plenty of good shows maybe it's time that you just need to start watching shows yeah during this because this period is going to come to an end, right? The kid at four will have an attention span. And you can, if you choose, start sharing classic film with them and watching a lot of film, right? But in the meantime, I think movies were made to be watched start to finish. They weren't made to be sampled. And I think respecting the art is important. Totally agree with you on this one. Um, <clears throat> I had an epiphany like 20 years ago which was 
you only get to watch a great movie for the first time once. Yes. Because I found a movie or two that I absolutely loved. And I don't remember when this epiphany was, but let me just say it was around, it could have been American Beauty. Like I loved the movie American Beauty. Yes. And then I bought the DVD and I watched it and I loved it each subsequent time. But I remember feeling like, man. I don't have that initial feeling. That first time yeah. watching it where it just unfolded in front of me and I had no idea what or where it was going was magic. The problem is you have to watch 30 duds for every one that is actually like worth, you know, really having that experience. But the but this tragic thing will be that Shay, over the course of five or 10 years, will have a couple of majestic films that he that does he not and, do justice to. That he watched like eating a bag <laughs> of Skittles. And so he should, knowing that, hold all those off and just plan some time 10 or 15 years from now where you're going to binge and you're going to really indulge in those things. And the movie will be 10 years old by then, but at least you did it right when you did it. But it doesn't need to be 10 or 15 years. Let's be frank. His kid Agreed. is three, he said, right? Or two? Two. two. It's like two years is all you yeah. need to hold off, right? As a four-year-old, you can share film certain you know with your child or also you're not going to be ping ponging around back and forth so much you'll as at four you know easy babysitter come over or easy play dates start to happen or, or then slumber parties start to happen your your time becomes a lot less constricted like real quick totally and my concern for shay as well is Everything in our modern society is training your kid to not have an attention span. Yes. Training her to have a short attention span. So you forcing her to go to that movie when she was three was fighting back against yes. modern tech. Shay is giving into modern tech. Shay is getting sucked into the shorter attention span by doing that. And so he needs to yeah, stave Shay. that off as well. Yeah, Shay. Be a man. Grow a spine, Shay. Exactly, Shay. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.